Thank you again for uh, keeping us company. This is why in the morning, I trust you, you will be moving straight to our discussion this morning. You are talking about politics. And I want to begin with a question to my guest right here. What do you make of a government led by Raila? <laughs> Good morning, uh, Hilary. I think we should move away from recycling of leaders. And I think uh, Raila has pl played his role in the politics of this country. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he'll be the best suited in the next dispensation uh, come 2022 because of how world politics are going mm -hmm. and um, how things are changing in, in this new era. Uh, so I think we need more of a vibrant uh, president come 2022 mm -hmm. for us to go to the next level. Because if we bring in uh, a leader who is not as vibrant, who is not as up to date uh, with uh, the, the changes in the world, uh, global politics. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that like, Raila does not understand global politics. That's not my, uh, my, uh, my, my portraying. But what I'm saying is that we need more of a vibrant uh, kind of a younger uh, leader to lead Kenya into the next dispensation. Uh, right now we need to, we respect our older leaders. We are grateful for where they have uh, brought us. They would have done better, mm -hmm. but we are grateful for, for the fact that they have brought us. But I think their time is up. I think that their their time is up. Mm -hmm. There is there is no room for them come uh, 2022. I'm not saying that we are going to have a 24 year old leading us uh, come 2022. But we need a more uh, vibrant, a more well integrated person with the global politics the way they are heading mm -hmm. towards. Because when you look all over the world, um, I know. Someone will say uh, Donald Trump is now going to 74 years, uh, that he's coming campaigning in the uh, 2020 politics in the U.S. Uh, but you see, America has gone through a lot of uh, political changes over a longer period of time. They have been independent for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you look at them, they also had very young, vibrant uh, political leaders in their, in, in their formation stages. So Kenya being only 50 plus uh, post-independence, then we, where we are, we need a little bit of a more vibrant person so that we can jumpstart mm -hmm. uh, our economy development and also having our global, uh, imp uh, our global uh, space somewhere in the global part of the politics. So for me, I would urge Kenyans, come 2022, I think mm -hmm. let's get a little bit of a younger person uh, maybe i would prefer my preference would be someone between the age of 45 years to around 55 years maximum 60 years we need such kind of a a, a bit experienced person but also a little bit younger uh, but uh, and then at least they are up to date with the current uh, trends that are going on uh, globally in terms of digitalizations, mm -hmm. social media, uh, interactions with the population. And then remember that 70% of the current uh, population are young people. So we need someone who is a bit close to the, to the, the population that is being led. You see, uh, when uh, we have an, an older kind of a person, the age, although someone would say Kibaki, came in uh, well he was around was it 70 or 60 something 70 something he was i think around uh, 76 years by the time he was living he was around 80, 86 around 76 years mm -hmm. or 70 something mm -hmm. uh and someone would say he's still late but you see it had its own challenges because he came in later uh, as an old person mm -hmm. uh, it had its own challenges i wish i wish we had kibaki while he was maybe in in his 45 years of age or 55 years of age would have done uh, a, a little bit more uh, then and someone will say we had Uhuru who came in, uh, I think it was around 50 something, uh, being the, the president. Uh, but the, the challenge was, you see, when they came in with someone like uh, William Samuel Ruto, the, the, there was that spring of hope and spring of uh, vibrancy within the country. Mm -hmm. The only challenge that was there is that. Um, 
we wish we had such a vibrant kind of individual with the intellect of uh, of of Mwai Kibaki, you know the, the, the social <laughs> presence <laughs> uh, of uh, of Uhuru and William Ruto and then I wish they had the intellect of um, of Mwai Kibaki maybe we would even be 10 times ahead uh, or would you would you believe with the older age where we say age comes with wisdom or wisdom comes with age yeah, age comes with wisdom because of exposure, one, and experience. I, I, I'm not refuting the role of mature population in the country, all, all the older population. They still have a major, major role because even in our own African setting, there was a role of the elders. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, be as it may that there is the role of the elders in, in wisdom, but they can serve as advisors. You see, they can serve as advisors, not to tamper, because uh, sometimes when you have young people leading, they may take us to a downhill. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we still need the elders in, in, in the society so that they can share wisdom advice. Mm -hmm. But... Um, we need someone who is uh, a bit energetic because right now with Baba going over, uh, overseas for treatment, you see, now those are some of the issues that uh, make you a little bit afraid here and there. And even, even when you look at medieval times, uh, the younger the king, the better. But the younger is not like those 10 year olds or 14 year olds because there was the danger of it. But mm -hmm. it's that nice, beautiful age that someone is in. Uh, that's why I'm giving that range of 45 to someone around. Someone who 50, can go to war. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 someone can go to war. Mm -hmm. They are still vibrant. Their health is in, intact. Uh, they, they, they have, uh, what is it, uh, vi vitality in them. Mm -hmm. And they're also able to relate with the younger population and at the same time they're able to relate with the older population. You see, that's a very good mix of an age. Uh, otherwise, if you have a too old person, there may be a gap when it comes to youth representation, uh, youth interaction with this uh, ki ki kind of an individual. And then if they are, they are very, uh, if they are too young, there may be no interaction with the older population and, and the mature population. So we need someone who is a blend, a mix. You see, that's why you look, look like somebody like Obama. You see his age, he was in that mix. Uh, he was around, um, I think, 44 years of age uh, by the time he was becoming the president of the United States. So you see, he was in between. He could relate with the younger population. They could say, yes, uh, yes, we can. And still could relate with the mature population because he's at like a mid, in, 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 in between. So it's a very good way of, of, of blending uh, uh, both, both sides of the spectrum. And you're mm -hmm. able to, what is it, as a leader, you're able to, um, uh, to understand or to be part and parcel of both extreme uh, cases. But when you have one extreme on both ends, they, mm -hmm. they, there'll be a tendency of one group being ignored. As much as people may say that they'll bring in advisors to advise you, uh, if, if like they, the someone can say now, Raila is going to bring a young person to be advising them, mm -hmm. oh, ni, 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 ni. but you see, there is that aspect of a leader when you have the experience, you've experienced it yourself, or you can fit in, into the shoes of your, of, of, of your um, of your populace, it, it, it helps you become a better leader because you're able to understand their situations. Because right now, uh, most of the challenges that we're experiencing in our leadership right now uh, is they feel someone like Uhuru was born in state house, he has never experienced any hardships like a normal Kenyan. And uh, so they feel he's like uh, aloof with the problems that are affecting a normal, uh, normal Kenyan. And so him, he has to depend on the advice of other people uh, to try and explain to him the experience of, of, of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But someone like Mwai Kibaki, who was the son of a nobody, uh, he went through the same systems we went through. His, his dad was very poor. Uh, he went through the system uh, just like a normal Kenyan. When he got into leadership, maybe because of the hardship he went through trying to acquire education, mm -hmm. so his number one aspect uh, was to ensure there's free primary education so that everybody can get uh, education. Maybe where he came from, maybe his brothers and sisters had challenges of uh, accessing education. So when he got into power, because it's something he can relate to, he mm -hmm. was able to execute us. Because our, our leaders come from our very own population and um, well, our very own society. And if they come from 
from our own society. It's those experiences that they have grown with. They're able to interact with us because that's what has built them. Mm -hmm. So when you look at someone like um, William Samuel Ruto, he's a, a son of a nobody, he comes from a nobody, as in he starts life like everybody else and has climbed up the, the, the social ladder. So when you, when you tell William Ruto they are people walking barefoot, he mm -hmm. can understand. But there are people, you go tell them, there are people walking barefoot, they are, they are wondering, how are people walking barefoot? <laughs> or you go tell people they are, that they're eating breakfast of 200 shillings, they're wondering when them all their life they've been eating a breakfast of, uh, of 10,000 10, shillings. So we need, uh, I would feel in the next um, 2022 elections, is let's choose a vibrant uh, kind of an individual mm -hmm. uh, who is not too old, neither not too young, but within the mid uh, mid range, uh, because and someone who has grown within the society and has experienced and has been exposed to the challenges and the issues that have affected uh, each and every common Mwanainti. That, that is the kind of individual I would tell Kenyans, mm -hmm. whether it's the presidency, whether it's your MP, uh, whether it's your, uh, what is it called, whether it's your social uh, youth leader, your MCA, choose somebody who who is mature enough to handle the crisis and the challenges that comes with okay. We don't want uh, issues like the way we have the MP of Embakasi. You see, there's, it's easy to... He, he's young, but whatever he's doing... <laughs> It, it, it's not uh, yeah, what you'd so expect to from a leader. Power, yeah? mm -hmm. we are, we are all, all easily become uh, to, to to have what you call impunity of 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 of, of the highest caliber. So I want us to quote uh, uh, Murathe, mm -hmm. and by the way, they say when Murathe is speaking, mm -hmm. he, it is the president speaking. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, is it as the people of the media who has uh, mm -hmm. brought this picture or this image to the public that mm -hmm. when Murathe speaks, mm -hmm. uh, he speaks uh, is the mouth of the president mm -hmm. and when Murkomen speaks he mm -hmm. speaks on behalf of the uh, deputy, deputy president. president now he said yesterday yeah. that uh, we think it's time Kenyans rewarded the years of struggle of Raila Molodinga mm -hmm. they owe it to him mm -hmm. it's like Mandela mm -hmm. and 2022 will mm -hmm. be a Mandela moment mm -hmm. we would also like to tell him that uh, that is Raila mm -hmm. to be a transitional president who will then nurture the young generation mm -hmm. to take over in 2000 uh 2027 mm -hmm. now I, I, i'm seeing the aspect Raila to be uh at the a transitional president mm -hmm. we'll be moving from a youth mm -hmm. uh to an elderly person mm -hmm. who will now again bring another youth mm. he has been in the leadership yeah uh, do you think he has mentored people and now saying that we will be rewarding him mm -hmm. what's your take why should we reward people because uh because maybe they fought for something. Maybe their 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 purpose in life was to fight, but not to lead. You know, you, some people we have to understand uh, the purpose of each uh, individual. Uh, and is it only Raila Amolo Diga who has fought for the democracy of this country? I don't think so. I think the other leaders who have also fought for democracy. Why don't we put Mother Karua then? If, if it's the transition or we are trying to look for, she has also fought for democracy, right? All, all the way from uh, 1992, uh, 1992 uh, all the way. So we should not reward a leader because it's like we are pitying. You see, the way Morada is, setting, is stating is like we are pitying the struggles and the fight that he has fought. So at least to console his soul. But at the expense of 47 million Kenyans, no, I, I feel... His time is up. He did his role. We are grateful for the role he played. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I think he he should just accept that he will go down history books that he was part of the struggle. Uh, but now having to reward uh, somebody because of uh, them having fought for democracy and we are in a new type of dispensation come 2022, why should we go backwards? And we, were, we are trying to be progressive. I think voting for Raila or Mola Odiga is not progressive politics. I think it's a retrogressive kind of politics because there's nothing new he's going to bring on the plate. There's nothing new, actually, he's going to bring on the plate. Mm -hmm. uh, we know uh, for a very long time, um, Raila is not a mentor <laughs> because he was a guy who, who wants to be the 
the showstopper you know uh in, in, in terms of uh when it comes to only recently uh, around maybe 2017 mm -hmm. that we seeing people like uh, sifuna coming on board uh you know yeah somehow some few young leaders and the body. <laughs> uh, yeah but but when you compare it with how jubilee was jubilee was a bit vibrant because you could see someone like uh, sakaja uh being part of the party uh leadership uh bringing in a very energetic youth uh, leaders into their campaigns you could see it was a bit vibrant and holistic but when you look at the nasa on the other end it had a lot of old people uh if you are a young person chances of you being stifled was easy so i think I don't think Raila now to come 22 he'll change his character and then now at now start going to Vijana mm -hmm. because we, we saw Kibaki in in the year 2007 uh even 2002 Kibaki was surrounded by who there are no mm -hmm. young people it was mm -hmm. the old mafia that was surrounding Kibaki because that is what he has grown uh, knowing uh, then maybe people like Uhuru and William Ruto the reason why they brought in young vibrant individuals because maybe even them their circles of of, of interaction were a bit uh, the younger populace so I don't think Raila now come 2022 mm -hmm. uh, he will now have be surrounded by at young people nini nini. Mm -hmm. most likely he'll still be surrounded by the old mafia the old way of doing things and i feel where kenyans we are right now we don't need we, we are grateful for what they have done but i think we we need to move to uh to to another new transition because the way the world is going even you look at the leaders it's more younger leaders more vibrant leaders and i believe even after donald trump finishes his four-year term uh, uh between 2022 and 2024 Maybe the next dispensation will have more youthful and, and young leaders. Yeah, but we should stop rewarding people based at here. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like, the a, it's you like are a young enjoying. man uh, <laughs> uh, feeling pity for a young man because he has really struggled to uh, maybe help her, take her out. Then you feel pity for the young man because he has really suffered. But he may <laughs> not be the right suitable mate for you, you see. So the same thing with our Kenyan uh, politics. We should not feel weishe for somebody because of the struggles that they have gone through. But we should reflect. Did we feel weishe for Mwaikibaki because of the struggles he had done? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think we, we chose Mwaikibaki in, in the year 2002 and 2000. And please, somebody should not come and tell me that Raila said Kibaki Tosha. No, people had uh, analyzed and seen what Kibaki can do in the various uh, departments. So when, wh what has Raila, you know I usually ask people, apart from fighting for democracy, okay, and shouting and saying, oh, nini, nini, you know, making our political scene uh, very fiery. What, what impact, what other impact mm -hmm. has he done? For me, I feel he has stifled a lot of development we would have been very far in in between the year 2007 we had we had would have gone double uh what we have experienced in between 2002 and, and 2007 he he stalled a lot of development and people have to see that they they have to to think critically and, and analyze his legacy because apart from shouting uh, for freedom nini nini beyond that based on his own experience uh, being an MP in Bondo, being an MP in Kibera, uh, people experienced developing in Kibera when uh, Okoth became the MP. So that clearly tells you, would you want to place a whole entire country when every other part of the world is moving fast when it comes to 2022? Do you want to do that? I think we, we, we need to shift from uh, rewarding people for for their struggles because you look at even americans do they do you think they reward people based on their struggles for freedom otherwise those activists mm. and 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 those people who fight for rights they would be the ones leading uh in those uh, elections you know in in being leaders in in the united states but people sit down and say no 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 Let, let's think critically well, can we work with this person for all that time what have they done Mm, for, uh, for, for, the for, for the for the people yeah i want us to look to another comment and this is by senator orengo mm -hmm. he uh he said being led by president uhuru and Raila yeah. Odinga, yeah. i know kenya mm. uh, will be where we want 
we wanted to be and we have only two years to implement the BBI. Mm -hmm. So actually from what he has said, mm -hmm. we have two years mm -hmm. to implement the BBI. Mm -hmm. There has been a, a, a hint that mm -hmm. it could be this year. Mm -hmm. Now uh, mm -hmm. Corona happened, mm -hmm. Libya stopped. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be next year, mm -hmm. maybe through the, the uh, parliament. Mm -hmm. But now him saying they have only two years mm -hmm. and Uhuru and Raila working together. Do mm -hmm. you think there's a, there's a way Uhuru now could like... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, say Raila Tosha. <laughs> uh, there could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. But uh, as much as they are planning, you know, based on their mindset, they think this is the way the country should go. Mm -hmm. And the only way the country should go is, is finally Raila becomes the president of this country mm -hmm. now. They fail to understand that this country does not belong to them. So they can arrange, 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 but there is the one who owns this country. Mm -hmm. And he who owns this country is the one who knows, and that's why Uhuru reached to a point and said, only God knows mm -hmm. who is going to be president come 2022. Mm -hmm. Now, why would we want to change um, the constitution based on individuals? You see, that is very, very retrogressive. We should amend the constitution or change the constitution based on what the 47 millions of Kenyans need. But we can't be changing the constitution every 10 years because when you look at the, the, the trend, it's like every, every five years towards, a, towards an, a major election, we want to change the constitution to tailor make it to suit specific individuals. That's the problem I have with the BBI. That's my major problem with the BBI because we are tailor making it to suit specific individuals when they have realized the way the constitution is currently is not favoring them. Mm -hmm. You get, and you see the, the, the people of Kenya are superior. We, we, we say that the, the, the people are the ones who are supreme. But now we are living in a country whereby specific people are the ones who are supreme. The people of Kenya are mm -hmm. number two. Which is very wrong because it tells you what happens is if now let's say we get a very ruthless leader come 2022. So do, does that mean when it's near election they will also uh, campaign again we need to change the constitution to suit. And the IABC. And the IABC. Mm -hmm. So I think Kenyans need to refuse and say we will only amend the constitution. We will only amend, uh, am amend the constitution or change the constitution because we as the people we feel one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And if you look even at the American constitution, they have only they have been in existence for over two hundred years, but they have only done the amendments only at least twenty seven times. Thirty three times have attempt, but twenty seven amendments have gone through out of the 33 in a span of 200 years now kenya we want to start like a trend every five years we are amending something we are we are we are changing the constitution mm -hmm. so when shall we stabilize as a country are you get and then wh wh on what basis are we changing this constitution is it based on a policy we, we are, on a policy research that we have done is it based on, on on a finding that we have done or are we just changing because we feel uh, it's not favoring us how we were expecting it to work it's not no longer working for us mm -hmm. you you understand okay. so i think it's 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 malice i think it's manipulation uh if your time is up it's your time is up if okay. your if, if your purpose is Done, it's done. Don't come to force yourself to the people of, of, of this nation. And it's and, and I'm sorry to say it's going to cost uh, many leaders. Okay. Yeah, it's going to cost many leaders. Uh, come come 2022 because of this whole uh, trying to manipulate the the, the, the Kenyans in, 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 into this whole BBI uh, fiasco. I, I want us to go back to Morales' comment. Mm -hmm. uh, he went on to say, this was, was his on yeah, uh, yeah. Facebook page, yeah. that the Mount Kenya region mm -hmm. will be uh, voting for Raila, not to punish Ruto, but <laughs> to reward him. Now, let's talk about the man Ruto. If the politics we're seeing around right yeah. now, yeah. it will be Raila versus Ruto. Mm -hmm. Imagine the race. Ruto will win. Why would he win? And then yet Raila maybe we will have the system and he's the people's Which president. System? Who is the system? <laughs> Raila had the system in 2013. It didn't work for him. Mm -hmm. Right? 
two two young vibrant uh, uh, leaders cropped up with ICC hanging on their neck, right? Mm -hmm. Yet Raila was part of the government, part of the system. Mm -hmm. It was so easy for him to have won in 2013. Why didn't he win in 2013? Mm -hmm. So you being quote unquote part of the system and you look like you're favored by the system does not guarantee you uh, that you will easily sail through. Um, somebody may argue like 2007 Kibaki because you see it worked for him because he was within the system, right? Uh, right now with the handshake he's part of the system but someone like William Samuel Ruto is being pushed out of the system. Which may work for his favor anyway. That's why I was, we were even telling them they should even actually uh, impeach him. Let him go uko, uko, uko mashinani, he starts again. It mm -hmm. will actually even actually really, really favor him. But now you see, it has toned down over the time. They have realized if we a victim, it might actually w work in their own uh, disfavor. Mm -hmm. So where Kenyans are right now, I don't think... As much as Murada is just, I think he's just talking rubbish, uh, shouting, 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 shouting. But I tell you, come 2022. Mm -hmm. Actually, it br brings me to, the, to uh. the concern that I have had for a period of time. Uh. There's a... This is not the first time he's commenting such statements. Yes. There's a time he even said, mm -hmm. uh, 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 as you can see, mm -hmm. Ruto is not a man to wish away. Yes. And now he has begun again. There's also time he said mm -hmm. he's, uh, he, he will support him. Yes. Then he changed. Mm -hmm. Now he's saying, uh, Raila, do you think he has been put there to mm -hmm. confuse uh, the, the political space and uh, bringing an agenda that mm -hmm. will make us focus on different things, mm -hmm. whereas in the back door something is going on? Yeah, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, politics, uh, words have an impact because it's like you're planting a seed. In people's mind mm -hmm. so when they realized uh, uh, William Ruto was getting like Mount Kenya support although some people think that Mount Kenya uh, are lying to Ruto mm -hmm. but you see when you plant a seed it grows over time so Morada what he's trying to do is just trying to plant a seed a thought process into the minds of, of, of Kenya uh, of the Mount Kenya uh, population is is just trying to plant uh, a seed. Eh? Hopefully, he, he is hoping that it's going to, to grow, to grow over time. Uh, but one thing he has to understand is that I do not see, mm -hmm. I do not foresee in the coming future. Mm -hmm. He will plant, 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 plant. But you see the beauty of uh, the Kikuyu population uh, is that they can be very decisive. Uh, at the end of the day, they can clap for you, clap, clap, but when they go to the ballot, things change uh, at, at, at the ballot paper. Mm -hmm. And like other communities, we know from the word go, if they have said it's you, they'll go with you all the way to the end. But uh, have, having had Raila, like quote unquote, an enemy of, of, of the Mount Kenya region, do you think an overnight? Uh, change of behavior will happen just because... Or the handshake. <laughs> yeah, or just because... If Nusum Kate didn't change the perception. Mm -hmm. Nusum Kate did not change the perception, right? Because come 2013, <laughs> they were like, no, we are not voting for this one. They really did campaign. And come to 2017, there was no way uh, uh, they are going to vote for this person. So for me, I feel... I'm not saying we'll never have a Luo leader in this nation. We will have a Luo leader, but it won't be Raila Molodinga. We'll have another Luo leader. We'll have another uh, tribe ruling this country, I believe, beyond the Kalenjin and the Kikuyu, uh, because that's, that's the way the country is going to progress. But it will not be Raila Molodinga. Sorry to say, he will not be the first Luo president to hold that seat. It will be another person, but not Raila Molodinga. Maybe his children or somebody, mm -hmm. but, the, but there'll be another person, but not him specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's, it's very difficult to change the perception 
of individuals very difficult it's very difficult mm -hmm. yani itakuwa ngumu sana because remember there is still the old uh, population that has been there since 1984 they are still there in exam because they may be there in their in their in their 50, 55 in their 60s there about mm -hmm. which is quite a number right mm -hmm. then there is this in between uh, population that is between the age of 40 to around 55 right mm -hmm. and then there is the largest chunk that is 18 year olds up to 35 years who don't even feel this vibe of Raila Mall. They don't even, because in 2002, maybe they were still in class one or class two, you know, so they don't know this, mm. the impact and the vibrancy of, of, of Raila. They, then they're, they're talking a, a little bit of a different thing. So if you ask maybe my sister who is a 13 year old right now, mm. uh, what is her perception? She may not even have a clue who is Raila Amol or Dinga. She may know he's he usually mentioned on TV, but she does not have the aspect or the or the or, or, or the of of the impact uh, of uh, relationally when it comes to Raila Amol. So for me, I feel Raila should retire peacefully. Uh, he be grateful he had an opportunity to to serve this nation mm -hmm. and uh, to fight for democratic rights uh, where they were uh, really fought for. But and then he just sits down and says he has done his role. He'll he'll be remembered just like the way we remember Tom Boyer. Uh, he will be remembered uh, just as we remember other veterans that okay. he really helped uh, this country. But he should, if he loves this country, if Raila Amolo Odinga loves this country, then he should allow 2022. Don't introduce BBI stuff. Don't manipulate the constitution unless you're changing the to, to benefit. Wanjiko. But when you read that BBI, it's not benefiting Wanjiko. It's not amend. They are not even lifting up the burdens of uh, the huge wage bill that is being um, being uh, felt with this current constitution. If okay, he really yeah. loves this country, mm -hmm. then he should allow the course of this country come 2022 to take its course. Let him go home and retire. Uh, I want us to finish with uh, this uh, final thing mm -hmm. uh, where... Um, and Jorge was uh, appointment was revoked mm -hmm. and be based on what she had posted uh, regarding Nairobi National Park she said at the mm -hmm. and now I, I think it's something that we should be speaking to the youth mm -hmm. uh, what you post count mm -hmm. uh, counts so much mm -hmm. uh, because what will end up chimba chimba yeah and now I may lose job yeah a, a very good position mm -hmm. and actually we are asking now do you think social media influences politics in kenya yeah yeah social, social media uh, you know it's the era of social media mm -hmm. definitely social media has an impact uh in the 1920s it was uh, before the 1920s it was the newspaper mm -hmm. newspaper newspaper it's, it was a way of communicating uh with the population mm -hmm. Uh, when it came to the 1920s, the radio came about. So people would get information of the current affairs, politics within that time through the radio. Then come in the 1930s towards 1940s, the, the TV era came on board. Mm -hmm. And now the, the beauty of TV now brought, uh, we could see the person talking to us and there was that able, uh, there was that interaction. So for a long period of time, TV was, was the mode of, of, of transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, was a mode of transmission in terms of communication uh, with, with the general public now. The issue of television, like we saw like for Donald Trump, uh, it can skew to a certain leader and block out another person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but now, uh, with no social media platform, anybody can speak their mind without uh, fear of being cut off. I don't have to go to a major TV station for them to host me. I can just create my own Facebook live video and I broadcast my opinion. And if there are people who agree with my opinion, I'll have my own, uh, my own followings. So, and you would realize that uh, even in the 2013 general election, I think what made uh, Uhuru and Ruto have a tip towards uh, even victory is how they leverage on social media. And like, the cord people, eh? mm -hmm. the cord people who had the old school of thought. Although Martha Karoa and um, Peter Kenneth had also, had also tried to leverage on social media, and they had more followings actually than even Uhuru Ruto, but you see them, they didn't engage in other aspects. That's why people say 
uh, Peter Kenneth was the president on social media, <laughs> but mm. he only for, he didn't he not he did not blend social media with other aspects of the campaign. Okay. But uh, Uhuru Ruto leveraged on that, and you see now with that social media presence, they had the social media presence, and then they also went to the ground. It it, it, it enabled him to boost. Donald Trump is a very uh, good example of very. I think he is almost reaching a almost 1 billion mm -hmm. uh quote unquote tweets as the most talked uh, person. Where he the... fires people on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so in, in conclusion, uh, the issue of uh, Pauline Joroge shows you I, I, I don't think um, it's her tweet not her tweet, her Facebook uh, comment that she made because she was airing her views like any other person can mm -hmm. air their views. Right? But I think the issue that came about mm -hmm. is that when the youths or when Kenyans heard she has been appointed as a board uh, director for tourism, and yet the same individual has another job at NEPAD as a communication officer, mm -hmm. the youths who are being affected by unemployment were wondering these spaces why are we rewinding the same kind of people mm -hmm. don't we have individuals who can fit in and you don't have to hold two positions at the same time so you are on one end working for nepad but you're also on the tourism board you see that is what outranged the youth and what did they do the dcia of <laughs> court went and investigated something that can implicate because you see social media is used for propaganda to change an opinion to change a thought mm -hmm. but the underlying cry that the youths had not because that a youth has been appointed mm -hmm. uh to be part of the of, of the board mm -hmm. but the cry they were having is this person has had other portfolios. How comes there's no other new person to hold the same same portfolio? And 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 uh, beyond that, Pauline Joroge uh, aspect, they are not even digging into why are children of politicians being given these high-profile jobs? Is it that among us, the youths in this country, mm -hmm. they are not given? They are, they are, we don't have qualified individuals. Mm -hmm. So someone even one, once commented and said, uh, so the sons and the daughters of high profile people are the one getting these jobs in government while you your sons who have degrees and masters are sweeping the streets and clearing the garbage in the streets so right. i think that was the under i think that was the underlying uh what well, that was the underlying cry of mm. of people when they went to talk about pauline joroge but then her comment four years ago was a good conduit for, for them to, 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 to explain their frustrations. Uh, all right. Yeah. We are out of time, and I hope my director will allow me to read these comments very <laughs> fast. Uh, mm -hmm. To the questions, uh, Kenyan heart killer says, of course, uh, they have to influence. Then uh, MC Headboy Soja out on Kuthika Chuka. <laughs> yes, social media influences. <laughs> uh, Arnold Okunyuk says, good morning, all Naivasha Lakeside, Osiri, and Malindi Estate were well representing. Uh, Kluez, Duncan Kluez says locked from Oyaro Estate. Um, if we could get another one very fast, ground politics compared to social media politics are two very different things. And finally, of course, this is His Excellency Christopher Alvin Mokai. He says, of course, it does. That is why Kenya is going to have its youngest president in 2022. Mm -hmm. At least he has some uh, dreams. Thank you so much for coming, Beatrice, and okay. uh, trying to highlight uh, that. We're hoping Kenyans will make a decisive information uh, choice when it comes to 2022 uh, voting. Thank you so much back home for keeping us company. She has been my guest, Beatrice Cairo, political analyst. Um, Dereva Hillary, have yourself a very good day. Enjoy yourself and enjoy the rest of our programming. Goodbye. <laughs>